perfect markets and economics. And there are a few assumptions about perfect competition. So think about the following. Number one, we could assume that there are many buyers and many sellers. When there are many buyers and sellers, there's also what we call perfect mobility, which means consumers are able to go into the market freely, they can exit, and firms, producers, could also enter the market freely and exit when they want to. At the same time, the goods that are sold in a perfectly competitive market is called homogenous. Homogenous. So there's really no branding or advertising when it comes to products. Uh, we're not looking at Nike shoes or Reebok shoes, but rather we're looking at black shoes or red shoes without any branding whatsoever. So it's all homogenous. At the same time, we know that you as a consumer, you have what we call perfect information. Perfect information. So you know exactly what the price of a good is. And if the producer is trying to dupe you uh, over or sell a good for a higher price, you know exactly to exit the market because you have perfect information um, for the consumer. At the same time, in this market, we can also see that the price which is given is also equal to the marginal revenue. And this is the only market that has price which is equal to marginal revenue. Now remember that price is also the demand curve. At whatever price, $10, $15, $20, consumers are willing to demand that good. So we could say that price equals MR equals demand, and only this market is going to show us a horizontal line on the y-axis on price. And since price is given, this means that producers do not have any influence at all so producers have no influence in the market. So as much as producers would like to increase price to hopefully make a profit, if they increase price, they know for a fact that consumers who have perfect information are not going to buy from them and will leave the market. So if you remember our cost and production example of the mobile car wash, I have given you the same numbers once again, quantity in days, total costs, variable costs, which is your labor, and fixed costs, uh, which is given at $10. And if you remember, we were able to calculate the average cost curves that of ATC, ABC, and marginal costs, uh, which I am forgetting to include the last three to complete the column. <clears throat> so now I want you to see what's going to happen when we are going to have price that producers are not able to influence, but rather it's the going price set at $10. Price is set at $10. And once we know that price is given, we could then go ahead and put price under the P column, $10, like so, all the way down. So if you are going to wash one vehicle, it will be $10, four vehicles, $10 each. Now, more importantly, what we want to know is what is the total revenue that you are going to come up with after washing five cars in one day. So now that we have price given, we can then use the calculation of price times quantity to get total revenue. In other words, total revenue is equal to quantity times price. So go ahead and take the time now to do that for TR on that column. Okay, so you should have the following for TR in this column. 
Uh, for zero vehicles, you're going to receive in revenue zero dollars. For one vehicle, ten dollars, all the way down to five vehicles, fifty dollars in one day. So now that we have completed the TR column, we have a new column at the very end called MR. Now MR stands for marginal revenue. Marginal revenue. And if you remember, marginal means one more, one more unit of. Revenue is what you're going to earn. So marginal revenue measures how much revenue you're going to earn when you are going to wash one more vehicle. And so we know from the perfect competitive market assumption that price, which is demand, equals MR. We know that price is $10, which means MR should also be $10. Now the equation is straightforward. It is just like calculating the marginal cost, except we are replacing all the C's for R's. So marginal revenue is a change in total revenue over the change in quantity. And if we are to do that, we can then look at MR, where we have at zero quantity, zero cars washed, there's no change. But from zero to one, there is a change. So now we could look at total revenue, which would be 10 minus zero over one minus zero. And that will give us $10. Now, since price is equal to MR at $10, based on this assumption, we then assume that it's gonna be $10 all the way down from four to five of the quantity. And to show that, here we have four to five vehicles, 50 minus 40, that's the change in TR, over five minus four, the change in quantity, which gives us $10. So again, we can say that price, which is the demand curve, is equal to MR, and therefore we have price at $10 and marginal revenue at $10. Now we can graph the last four columns. I am uh, excluding the average fixed cost. It should have been five, but I am only including ATC, ABC, MC, and MR on one graph. And so now we can go ahead and graph the following on our paper.